All right, congratulations on making it through three parts of PowerShell programming. Now we're getting on to part four, which is the second part of day two. Today we're going to discuss flow control. We'll talk about what exactly is flow control. Then we'll get into the aspects of planning. How do we plan our code whenever we're going to write some sort of program? And then how do we go use flowchart and pseudocode to help with that planning? Then we will go into our if else statements. We'll talk about switch statements. Then we'll get into a while loop. After we go through the while loop, we'll do some input validation. The next we'll do a do while loop and a do until loop. Then we'll get into four loops and then for each. Now for this section, we're going to stop right after switch statements. So we're going to go about halfway through. And then on the next part, uh, which is tomorrow morning, we'll go through while loops and then all the other types of loops associated with that. So first, before we actually start talking about flow control, we need to say, what exactly is flow control? So flow control really is just the decision process and how things or how decisions really are being made. Computers, again, like humans, despite our processing power, we can only process one decision at a time, All right? So there's gonna be some sort of decision that needs to be made and it needs to be uh, made by some conditional statements, right? So, you know, if, for example, if I'm gonna decide if I, I'm going to get a drink. So I'll get a drink if I am thirsty, right? So if I'm thirsty, I get a drink. If I'm not thirsty, I don't get a drink. So again, there has to be some sort of decision, right? That has to be made based on some inputs, right? Maybe my level of thirst to determine if I want to get a drink. Now, it is our job as a good programmer to create a script using proper commands and the right syntax to make decision making making easy for that computer, right? So we wanna go ahead and make that conditional statement make sense so that if that conditional statement is true, then it will do a certain function. It will do a certain thing. If it's not true, then it'll do something else. And notice again, the words I'm using, if and else, if then statements. So again, flow control, all it does is it allows for the use of operators to assist in making decisions using scripts. But before we actually dive into flow control and if else statements and switches, we need to talk about how do we plan something? How do we actually go from an idea for a script, planning it, and then finally executing and writing the code? So this is always, always, always important to plan, right? So I'm sure you're probably sick and tired of, of planning uh, since you actually just went through the planning block. But in programming, it's the same exact situation. You need to plan before you actually set out and execute. So again, it's important that we create a plan of action for our flow of the script prior to a coding. We need to have a plan at the very least in our heads before we actually go out and do the typing. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna have this idea, right? Now this idea can either come from ourselves, we can be thinking, oh man, it'd be pretty cool to create this script that does such and such a thing. Or it could be given to us by the instructor in the form of homework saying, hey, here's this thing that I want you to create, go ahead and create this script, right? So again, it has to start out with some sort of idea that's uh, not fully fleshed out. And then eventually you have to plan it out and then make it actually work. So again, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take that idea and then you're going to create a flow chart. Once you create that flow chart, then that flow chart will help you be able to write pseudocode, right? Pseudocode is just, again, it's like half code, right? It's kind of everyday English, kind of uh, just regular code, but mixed. And then after you go from that pseudocode is when you can actually write actual PowerShell code in you know the PowerShell ISE. So again, it starts from idea, goes to flowchart, and then eventually to pseudocode, pseudocode, and then finally to actual code. 
So whenever you're writing a flow chart, all right, so you have your idea, you're going to put it into a flow chart. There's actually uh, certain symbols that everyone has agreed upon for flow chart symbols. And again, it's important to be able to follow these symbols whenever you're actually writing out your flow chart. So anytime you're starting or ending the code, you're going to start out with an oval, all right? So that's why right here, terminator. Again, this is the start or the end of the process. So usually what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do an oval and then I'll write start in there. And then going from start to another process, right? You're gonna have these flow lines. And again, you should have arrows on this point, these flow lines showing it goes from this to that, all right? So again, you have your flow lines with the arrows showing the flow of this flow chart. And then you have these three different symbols here. You have input output, all right? So user input would be something like read host, all right, where we get user input. Uh, output would be something like write output, all right? So again, that would be using this parallelogram. Uh, using a rectangle would be a process. So this would be some sort of like operator, right? Like uh, this could be an arithmetic operation. Uh, this could be uh, a uh, a comparison operator, you know, anything like that, or just any type of, of process, really. And then lastly, we have our decision. Now, your decision really is, is kind of talking about your flow control, because your decision is going to split, right, where there needs to be a decision made, and your result is either going to be a true or a yes, or a no or a false. And coming out of that decision, you'll have two branches, right? Going into the decision is one line coming out of that decision will be at least two lines, a yes and a no. So here's some examples of flowchart, all right? So the one on the left is very, very simple, all right? It's not very complex at all. Notice there really is no decision that needs to be made in this one. So again, it's just gonna be one flow line. So there's no decision, really there's not gonna be any flow control. There's no gonna be if else statements in here. So for this one, we're just saying, hey, find the sum of these two numbers, all right? So again, we start with our start and then we come down here and read A. Now in PowerShell, reading something is actually asking for user input. So we do a read host and then we say, enter your first number, right? And then they'd enter 529. Then it would come here and would say, read host, enter your second number. They store that into variable B, right? And then they'd enter 256. And then we'd have this process where we're doing this arithmetic operation. We would say, maybe variable C equals variable A plus variable B, All right? And then we would print out the sum. So we would write variable C, which is the sum of variable A and B. And then that's the end. All right. So again, notice there's no decisions that really need to be made. So it's just a single file line that just goes straight up and down. Again, very, very simple code. But again, uh, it's good still, especially if you're early on in, to actually flowchart out what kind of code you want to write. The next code example here is uh, a little bit more, a little bit more tricky, but really not, not really that bad. So again, it's trying to find the profit or a loss when you have a certain income or a certain cost, right? And both of these are using read, right? So read host, you're asking for user input. So if we go ahead and read this one, we start out and we're gonna go ahead and use the read host command. We're gonna ask for a certain income. So we're gonna say, uh, please enter your income. So apparently the user will input, let's say a thousand, right? Then we're gonna ask them another question say, all right, now go ahead and tell me what is the cost? So then they go ahead and put in 800. Now we're gonna come down here, we come down to a diamond, which means a decision. So anytime you have a decision, you know there's gonna be some sort of like if else statement, a switch, something or other where it needs to have a conditional statement where you're asking a question and then you'll get either a yes or a true or a no or a false. So in here, we're asking the question, does income, is that greater than or equal to cost? So we would say, in effect, if 
income is greater than or equal to cost, if that is true, we're going to calculate the profit. Because if your income is bigger than your cost, that means you have, you know, some money left over, right? So the profit in this case is just income minus cost, which is going to be 200, right? If it's false, then we're going to calculate it as a loss, right? So we're going to take the cost minus the income. So in this case, like if it was a $2,000 uh, cost and a $1,000 income, we'd have a $1,000 loss. But in this case, we said our income was 1,000, our cost was 800. Therefore, the uh, the profit was 200, right? So then we'll go ahead and print out the profit, 200, and then we're ending. So again, notice through this one, there is a decision. We're gonna have some sort of flow control right here, right? And then it's either gonna be true or it's gonna be false. If it's true, it follows this loop. If it's false, it follows this path. All right, and then eventually it goes to that end right there. Now, what I want you to do, go ahead and I want you to write a flow chart that asks the user for input and then outputs to the screen if the number is even or odd. All right, so go ahead and pause it. Go ahead and get out a piece of paper, pen and pencil, and then go ahead and see if you can write out a flow chart that's gonna ask the user for input and then outputs to the screen if the number is even or odd. All right, now I want you to uh, go ahead, in this case, I want you to go ahead and write a pseudocode. So again, uh, a pseudocode of that same thing with a flowchart. But before you do that, I want to go ahead and explain real quick what pseudocode is. So again, after you're done with your flowchart, then you want to go ahead and translate that pseudocode, sorry, that flowchart into pseudocode. Pseudocode, again, it doesn't have to have the correct syntax, right? Because you guys don't even know really how to have syntax for like if else statements or switches or anything like that. But the biggest thing is you want to do is write it into everyday language. Again, there really is no standard for pseudocode. It just allows you to do a rough draft of your code before you start to type it out. Again, it's not really a standard, but it puts that flowchart into everyday language. So now I want you to go ahead. All right. And then I want you to actually write out the pseudocode from the flowchart that you had before. All right. So you can go ahead and pause this, get out your pen and paper, go ahead and write out the pseudocode for that actual code. All right. Now, I know that was probably fairly difficult for you to do, right? So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take those things that we just learned, right? And then we're actually going to start coding them in actual code, all right? So we're actually going to get back into PowerShell. I know it's hard getting your hands off the keyboard, but we're actually going to get step right back into PowerShell and start going over flow control and how we can actually do flow control inside of PowerShell. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are if else statements. So again, you have to realize like a computer is very similar to a com to a human in decision making processes, right? We don't make decisions just randomly, right? Every time we make a decision, it's because of some input and then some conditional statement that we have, and then we make that decision. A computer is the exact same thing, all right? So now we have to take what's in our head, all right? And we have to actually make it so that the computer understands it. All right, and we're gonna use this using if else statements, all right? So 
So let's go ahead and do that. So if else statements are used when there is a decision to be made and there are two possible results, you have result A and then you have result not A. So in other words, like I had the, the example before, if I am thirsty, I will get a drink. If I am thirst, if I am not thirsty, I will not get a drink. All right. So again, the two possible re results are going to be either I get a drink or I don't get a drink. So again, either result A, result not A. So the opposite. We also need to evaluate some sort of condition. So an if else statement will be used to evaluate one condition. In this case, our condition was, am I thirsty? If I am thirsty, if that is true, then I will get a drink. So we will execute the if portion of the code if the condition is true. However, there's gonna be an else portion of the code that we can execute if the condition is false. So if I am thirsty, then get a drink. Else, don't get a drink. So important, you don't have to have the else portion. You can have just an if statement by itself. All right, so again, it will execute the code if the condition statement, uh, or sorry, it will exit the code if the condition statement is false. So some of the key components for your if else statements, you're gonna have this if keyword, you're gonna have these con this conditional statement following this if keyword, and then you'll have your code statements. And then you'll have your else keyword along with some code statements following then. The way that you would read this is if, and then your conditional statements, for example, if I equals thirsty, your code statements would be, okay, get a drink, your else keyword, and then you would have, don't get a drink. So again, it's pretty logical. And a lot of this is logical. So you just have to be careful whenever you're making these to make sure that you're logically going through the answers, going through that conditional statement and making sure that it's making sense. All right, so for example, we have our if else statements that are used when there is a decision that needs to be made and again, there's two possible results, either result A or result not A. So again, there's gonna be several examples. If you date an airman, hey, guess what? You're gonna receive an article 15, all right? So you have if, you have the conditional statement, date an airman, all right? Then you have the then portion, you're gonna receive an article 15, all right? And that's just a simple if statement. You can also have an if else statement, right? So if, you study, right? Your conditional statement, did I study? Is that true or false? Then you're going to pass PowerShell and hopefully you see WT. Else, which means you did not study, security forces also needs good, good officers, right? So again, the key components, you have your if keyword, conditional statement, your code statements, then your else keyword and code statements. Notice you don't have two conditional statements. You only have the conditional statement after the if. The else does not have a conditional statement associated, to, associated with it. So let's go ahead and look up here. So we have this variable X is equal to nine. So you always want to initialize this variable at the beginning, all right? So we have variable X is equal to nine. We have our if keyword, and then we're saying, does X, does this variable X is it less than 10? So again, we have our if keyword, we have our conditional statement, all right? X less than 10. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Is nine less than 10? I would say that is true. So if this is true, you're gonna do this portion of the code. If this conditional statement is false, you're gonna skip over this part and you're gonna do the else. So if true, do this. If false, do the else portion down here. So always in an if else, you're either gonna do this or that. You can never do both of these. And you will always do one or the other. So you won't do both, but then you also won't do, won't do none of them. You'll do one or the other. Because an if else, it's either true or it's false. If it's true this, 
If it's false, this. Now I want you to go ahead and pause the video. I would like you to go ahead and write an if else statement that evaluates if X is even and outputs to the screen is even or outputs to the screen, it is odd. All right, go ahead and pause it. Uh, whenever uh, you're done, you can go ahead and play it and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I would write this if else statement in PowerShell. So again, we're gonna, we're gonna ask for a value and then we're gonna output to the screen as even or it is odd. All right, now I think it's really important that we shift over to ISE right now because it's it's a lot easier whenever you're gonna be writing long scripts to write it into the script pane. Um, just because if you're trying to write it down in PowerShell, if you have multiple lines, uh, it's just much easier to do the, your editing up here. So again, from now on, I'd pretty much use ISE uh, for the most part for the rest of the for the rest of the class. Now, there's a couple things that I want to make sure that we are being very careful about. Whenever we are writing scripts, we want to make sure that we are commenting in our code, right? Which helps us understand what we're doing, right? But then also it helps anyone else that's trying to understand from us, right? So anytime we write code, we want to make sure that not only we can go back and look at it and make sure since what it is, but if someone else is looking at our code, uh, like me, for example, if you have comments in it, I can kind of read what you were trying to do and make sense of it a little bit easier. So again, anytime I'm going to go ahead and comment, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to do a comment block at the top, right? And comment blocks, again, I do my uh, less than, greater than sign and then put two of those uh, uh, pound signs in there. And then I go ahead and usually I'll go and put, you know, who wrote it, so the name, And then I'll go ahead and put uh, today's date. So 18 Feb, 2022. And then go ahead and kind of write a, a title, right? So what is this? And again, we're gonna talk about, uh, for this one, it's just a simple if else statement. Uh, determining uh, if number is even or odd. All right, and that's good enough for now. All right, so again, you have the comment block at the top, kind of going over what exactly you're gonna be doing in this. Now, really, it's, it's kind of important at this point to kind of go ahead and go over, okay, what is, you know, already having a flowchart and a pseudocode in mind. If you haven't done it, it's probably good to go and kind of pause the video, kind of think about how you're going to set it up. Now, the way I want to set this up is I want to ask the user for a number, and then I'm going to take the number that they give me, right? I don't know what number they're going to give. And I want to take that number, and then I want to throw it into this, uh, this flow control, this if else statement, and I want it to determine if it's an even number and go and print to the screen, it is even, or if it's an odd number, print out to the screen, it is odd. All right. So first of all, I have to ask, I have to ask myself, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of comment out. So I want to ask the user for a number. All right. So let's say I don't really know how to do that yet. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, all right, I know I want to ask the user for a number here. All right. Um, and then I also, I know I want to uh, use an if else uh, if else statement to determine if even or odd. Okay. So ultimately I have, I have that right here. So ask the user for a number. Now I have to go back in my mind and I have to think to myself, okay, I'm asking the user for a number. What type of command allows me to do user input. So I think to myself, uh, okay, I remember that is, uh, that's read host, right? And then I need to use read host. All right, I'm gonna ask them 
ask the user for a number. So please enter a number. All right, but again, I need to make sure that's stored as a variable, right? So I'm just gonna do dollar sign number equals read host, please enter a number. Now, there's one thing that's wrong with this. All right, what do we know about the read host command? The read host command always saves as what variable type? That's right, a string. So therefore, because this is saving it as a string, we need to make sure that we explicitly call it to actually save it as what kind of variable type? An integer variable type, very good. All right, so we got the first part really out of the way, we're pretty much done. So we said, please enter a number. So the user is gonna enter whatever number, let's say 12. And that's gonna be stored into this variable number, but it's gonna be stored as an integer. Now we wanna use an if else statement to determine if it's even or odd. Now, one of the uh, shortcuts that I'm gonna go ahead and let you use uh, really will help you with a lot of flow control with loops, with if else's, with switches, with functions. Uh, it's the control J, all right? So control J allows you to actually do several of these uh, different functions, different flow controls, right? And then I would highly recommend using it because also it will help you with your syntax and making sure everything is aligned well. That is super, super important in this class to make sure that you have your spacing nice and neat, your um, your tabbing is nice, and everything is, is actually really nice. Because once we get into like day three, day four, uh, it's gonna get really confusing if you don't have everything organized. And you wanna be consistent with how you organize your uh, your code. All right, so let's go ahead and we did control J. Let's go ahead and type in if, all right? So then we have these two examples. I would go ahead and choose if else and then press enter. So the cool thing is, right, is it pretty much gave us a template, right, for this if else. Now this will definitely help us in the future, all right? So anytime you need like to use an if else or if you need to use an if or anything like that, Definitely, definitely, definitely uh, use this because it'll help you, especially if you're a beginner, right? Getting the format down. So the way I always do it and the way I recommend is that inside of your, your if you have, again, you'll have your if, you have your conditional statement, then you have your open and close and bracket. Now inside of here, right, is gonna be the action, like the then statement. If this is true, then do something else, do something else. All right. So if true, do this. If false, do the else, which is going to be inside this uh, code statement. Now, so we have our keywords. We have if else. The only thing we have to fill in is what is our conditional statement? And then what are our two results? So if, and let's say I don't really know how to do it yet, I can still go ahead and kind of type in some pseudo code here and just not run it until I'm ready to run it. So I'm wanting to output, if it's if this number is even, I wanna to output to the screen, it's even. If it's not even, I wanna output to the screen, well, it's odd. So let's say I don't really know how to determine that. So I can just go and say if, Let's just say number, right? If number is even. Now, again, this is gonna be incorrect syntax, right? But I'm not worried about that right now. I'll worry about the conditional statement in a little bit. But I wanna go ahead and put down this stuff. So if number is even, I'm gonna output to the screen. What command do I do for outputting to the screen, right? That should be right output. All right, so I'm gonna write output to the screen right? That number is even. So I can just say number is even. There we go. On my else, I'm going to output to the screen. All 
I'm going to right put the same thing, except odd. All right, so I have, if the number is even, it's going to output number is even. If it's not, then it'll go to the else and it'll say number is odd. And again, there's only one or the other. A number can either be even or it can be odd. It can't be anything else. Now, again, notice I get these squiggly lines. So it's telling me, hey, this is not right. I don't compute, right? This computer doesn't know what this is saying. So let's go and figure out how do I determine if a number is even or if it's odd? Again, there's a, a crazy amount of ways, right, to determine if a number is even or odd. If a number is even, I go ahead and I say number, maybe even numbers always end in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. That's one way I can do it, right? I can say, is the number, does it end with 0, 2, 4, 6, 8? Pro but probably what you're going to want to use is the modulus operator, right? So what you should know is that if a number is even, right, that when you divide by 2, it shouldn't have a remainder, right? So if I take number and I do mod two, right? If it's even, that means that remainder would be equal to zero. So if I divide it by two, the remainder, right? Because the modulus returns the remainder, that remainder should be equal to zero. So I take the number divided by two and it gives me the remainder. Is that remainder equal to zero? If that remainder is zero, I know it's even, boom. If it's not equal to zero, guess what? That means it wasn't evenly divisible by two. Therefore, it's equal to one. Therefore, that number would be odd. All right, so now, now that we have everything written there, all right, let's go ahead and let's run this code and see what happens. So again, we come up here, we go home and press play. All right, so we run our code. And then out here, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. It says, please enter a number. All right, so let's go ahead and enter a seven. Press enter. And then it outputs to the screen, seven is odd. Yes, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and run it again. All right, but before we run it again, actually at the top of my screen, I almost always, 99% of the time, I always put CLS. Because whenever I do that and I run it, it actually gets rid of all of this uh, top portion of it, right? And I just get the output. So I always like having that in there because then it just kind of uh, just clears the screen and then it lets me just do my input and it gives me that response. So again, please enter a number. Let's do an even number this time. Let's say 12. And hopefully it tells us 12 is even, which it does. Perfect. All right. So again, that is your first code for an if else statement. Again, I didn't have to do the else. I could have just done the if, and it would have just told me if the number was even. If the number was odd, it wouldn't have done anything. All right, so again, we're back with the if else statements. Hopefully everything so far is kind of making sense. I mean, we're gonna give you more examples, more problems. So again, make sure that you're uh, really, um, Asking questions if you have any help. Again, there's always SI in the morning if you need help. So we have our keywords, our if else, right? Next is the condition, right? Is X less than 10? After that, we have our code statements, right? So if this portion is true, it'll do this. If this conditional statement is false, again, it'll do this. All right, so again, another example. So we have X equals nine. Is nine less than 10? That is true. Then it should print to the screen less than 10. All right, so our if else statement, here's another one that I'll go ahead and let you do on your own. All right, so which one should it do? Should it do this one or should it do that one? All right, here's another example. We have A is equal to 12. So if A is greater than two, well, is 12 greater than two? Yep. The value A, in this case, the value 12 is greater than two. 
again, pretty, uh, pretty simple for those. Now, what about this one? So we have uh, this one is called ride the roller coaster. All right. We have this variable called taller than this. And then we have it set equal to 48. So now 48 is stored inside of the variable taller than this. And then we're going to go ahead and have a read host. So we're going to ask the user for input. We're going to say, please enter your name. And we're going to store that into name. Then we're going to ask him another question. We're going to say, enter your height in inches. And therefore, we're going to read that into this height, which again, we're going to force it to be an integer variable type. Because again, read host will always save it as a string unless we force it to be an integer. So again, we have our if statement. We're going to ask, is the height, which again, that was whatever they inputted. Is it greater than or equal to taller than this? 48. So if their height is greater than 48 inches, then what happens? Whoever name may ride the coaster. Else, so if it's not true, if this is false, it comes down to the else and it says name may not ride the coaster. All right. What is the expected output? Well, it depends, right? It depends whatever this person enters for their height. So if it's going to be greater than or equal to 48, then they may ride the coaster. If it's not, then they won't be able to ride the coaster. Now we have another one that's uh, if, else if, and an else. So again, this is very cool because you have an else if. Notice the else never has a conditional statement. The if always has a conditional statement. The else if always has a conditional statement, but the else never has. And that's because an else will automatically run this if everything before it is false. So if this is false, else if this is false, then the else automatically runs. But if it got to a true before the else, then the else won't run. So the else only runs if nothing else is true, then it will automatically run. So in this case, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and run it. All right. So we have our read host. What is the forecast for today? Sun, rain, or snow? So you're supposed to type in either sun, rain, or snow. And we're going to come down to the if statement. We're going to say if weather, which is whatever they inputted equals to rain, we're going to say, remember your umbrella. Else if, so this is saying this was false. If we get down to here, then the only way we actually get down to here is if this was false. If this was true, it writes this and then it exits out of this whole if, else, if, else flow control. But if it's false, then it goes to the next one. Else if weather equals sun. So again, if that's true, then it's going to go ahead and put it, come in here, and it's going to say, remember your sunglasses. However, if this is false and this is false, is, then it's going to go do the else. And it's going to say, take a warm hat and gloves. So we got rain, bring your umbrella, sun, remember your sunglasses. And the only other option would be snow, which would be take a warm hat and gloves. So again, what is the expected output? Again, it depends on what the user inputs. And that's the cool thing about if, else, if, and else statements is that it always depends on what the input is, what the output will determine what the output will be. All right, so let's go ahead and do a couple if, else statements. All right, now let's go ahead and write an if, else statement um, where I'm going to ask... All right, so we're going to go ahead and let's say we're going to go to the movies and on the movies there is a PG-13 movie. All right, so it's going to ask what your age is. And then again, if your age is, if you're at least 13, I want it to go ahead and output to the screen. You are at least 13 and you can see the movie. If you're not old enough, then say, nope, 
sorry, bud, but you're not old enough. All right. So let's go ahead and write that. And then uh, see if we can go ahead and make sure that we uh, have the syntax and everything correct. So again, before we start, I'm going to go ahead and use comments. Again, make sure that you're commenting everything to make it easier for me and yourself to read the code. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put down uh, my name. So whatever the title is. So PG-13 movie. And then today's date, 18 Feb 2022. And then a little bit of description for the code. So make an if else statement to determine if person can watch movie. Alrighty. All right, so let's go ahead and ask for user input and ask them first. Let's ask them their name. And then second, let's go ahead and ask them, what is their age? So again, for user input, we're always going to use what command? Yep, that's correct, the read host. And then we want to make sure that we save it into some sort of variable. So first, we're going to ask them their name. Let's go ahead and save that into uh, the variable name. And we're going to, again, we're going to use that read host command. And we're going to say, please enter your name. And then again, go ahead and comment saying we're going to we're going to ask the user for their name. And then second, we're going to ask them for their age. All right. So we're going to read host. All right. We're going to say, please, whoops, enter your age. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and comment out just saying ask the user for their age. All right. Now. Think about any time we ask the user for user input, right, using the read host command, we have to think about what variable type it's going to save their input as. Now, the first one is asking them for their name. It's going to save it as a string, right, which makes sense, right? And their name should be a string because it's just characters. Second, we're going to ask them for their age. Now, their age, there's going to be, it should be a number. And if we're going to want to do mathematical operations on it or comparison, uh, you know, comparison operations, then we're going to definitely need to make sure that it actually is some sort of number variable type. So we need to go back up here and we need to remember, right, to save that as some sort of, let's say, integer. All right, usually whenever you ask someone their age, you know, if they don't give you a decimal, usually it is a whole number. So integer should work fine in this in this case. Now, now we have their name, we have their age. Now we can ask our question, right? So whenever you go to see a movie, of course, they're going to ask you their age, maybe they're your ID or something like that, right? So now you have to prove that you are at least 13. So... In this case, we want to have an if else statement, right? So let's go ahead. Let's do hit control J. Let's do our if else and then have that out there. Now again, it, it says this right here, but of course we don't want that, right? So again, we have to ask ourselves, oh, so if what? So if they are at least 13, right then they can see the movie so if you know person is at least 13 years old then they can watch the movie all right else go home you are not old enough Right. So again, again, this is more pseudo code, right? 
but at least you kind of get the gist and then you need to go out and you say, okay, now I need to fix it, right? And now I need to make it into something that the computer can understand. So up here, if person is at least 13, well, what variable do we want to put into this conditional statement? So if person is at least 13, well, I need to, you know, have some sort of conditional statement that has age in there, right? Because age is what's going to determine how old they are, right? And if they're at least 13. So if their age is at least, at least means greater than or equal to 13, all right? So if their age is greater than or equal to 13, then guess what? They can watch the movie, all right? But I would need to go ahead and write output and I'm going to go and say they can watch the movie better yet I can actually use their name because they actually typed in their name right so this person's name whatever it is can watch the movie great now if it's false I'm going to go ahead and write output I'm going to say, go home. You are not old enough. But actually, just go and say, go home, name. You are not old enough. All right. So I think we're in a, in a pretty good spot here. Uh, again, anytime I do this, I always do CLS at the top. And again, that kind of makes it clear whenever I run it down here in the console. It just, it's, it's a lot cleaner of an output. So let's go ahead and run this sucker. All right. So let's go and put our name. Let's say our name is Sarah. Enter. All right. So let's go say, please enter your age. Let's say I am 14. What should it say? Well, Let's go ahead and go up here. Is 14 greater than equal 13? That is true. So if it's true, it should say, Sarah can watch the movie. So let's go ahead and press enter and see what happens. Hey, look, it worked. Sarah can watch the movie. Congratulations. All right, let's run it again. All right, let's choose a different name this time. Uh, we can just pick a random, random name. Let's go with uh, Nash. All right, so please enter an age. Let's say they are eight. All right. And we're going to press enter. Go home, Ash. You are not old enough. All right. So perfect. So again, we have uh, the name, we have the age, and again, it worked with this else statement. All right. So go home. You are not old enough. All right. Very good. Now, if you're inclined to, and you have a little bit of programming background, Go ahead, I want you to go ahead and add a little bit of a of a twist in this. All right, so I want you to go ahead and add, uh, ask them how much money they have. All right, so I want you to do this on your own. I want you to go ahead and, and put in there, uh, ask them, read host, so user input, Ask them how much money they have. And then in here, uh, if they have more than $5, right, they can watch the movie. If they don't have enough money, then they can't, right? But then I also want you to keep the other stuff in here too. So it's going to be checking a couple things. It's checking their age but then also checking the money. So if they have, if they're older than 13 and they have more than $5, I want you to say, you can watch the movie. If they aren't old enough, but they do have money, then I want you to say, go find your mom and bring her to the movies with you. All right. If they're older, but they don't have money, I want you to say, go get a job and come back. All right. And if they're 
too young and they don't have money, then just say, go home. You're not old enough. And when you get older, go get a job. All right. So go ahead and see if you can use that. Again, you're going to, in these, you're going to have to use some uh, logical operators like an and, an or, and so on and so forth, and probably an else if. All right, now that we're done with if else statements, I want to talk about switch statements. So switch statements, they have the ability to check multiple conditional statements one at a time. If statements really just check that one conditional statement inside of those parentheses. But again, switch statements are a little bit different in that they can check multiple conditional statements. So again, you have your conditional statements right over here. The, which state, the switch statement lists each condition and an optional action. All right, so if this condition is true, it'll do this. If this condition is true, it is this. So here's an example of a switch. All right, so have variable A is equal to one. You have the keyword switch and then inside variable, you're testing, right, variable A. And then each of here is comparing this to that variable, all right? So if variable A is equal to one, we're gonna print to the screen, it is one. If this variable A is equal to two, we're gonna print to the screen, it is two. If this variable A is equal to three, we're gonna print to the screen, it is three. If it's equal to four, we're gonna print, it is four. Now the difference between switches and if else statements is an if else statements, it goes until it hits a true. Once it hits a true, it does the associated action and then it escapes. Switch statements are different in that it goes through every single condition. Even if it hits a true, it will still run through all of them. All right, so again, switch statements, again, it goes through every single condition even if there is a match in a previous condition. That again is different than your if else. All right, so to direct the switch statement to stop comparing after a match is found, we can use the break statement. And that break statement will then terminate the switch statement. So again, if you use a break statement in each of these, then it's like going to that if else statement. Whereas once it gets to that first true, then it breaks out of the code. All right, so again, this example on the left, we have switch and then we have three. Notice there's two threes down here. So what would happen is this code would run. It would say it is three. And then this three would say three again because it still runs every single code, even if there's a match. Like here, there's a match and here, there's a match. So it goes ahead and it actually prints out both of those statements. And this side over here, notice there's a break right here. Therefore, once it gets to this first match, It'll print to the screen, it is three, and then it breaks out of there and it never gets to this one. So a switch statement may also have the keyword default. And again, the default would always be at the end of the switch statement. And it kind of acts like an else in an if else statement. So if there are no matches, if none of these are true, which this case, right, A is equal to six, so, well, six, six doesn't equal one, six doesn't equal two, six doesn't equal three, six doesn't equal four. Therefore, it's gonna hit the default and it's gonna print to the screen, it is not one through four. So again, if there are no matches in the previous, And again, if there are no matches in the previous conditional statement, then the default statement will execute. All right. However, if there is a match, let's say for example, A now is equal to two. All right. So then it'll print out it is two. As long as there is a match, then the default will never run. Right. So if there isn't a match, then the default runs. If there is a match, then the default, of course, does not run. It only runs if there is no match. All right, before we get to the exercise, I want to go ahead and do an example. So we can do an example of a switch and we'll go ahead and switch on over to PowerShell. 
All right, now that I went ahead and showed you uh, all the different options for if, else, and switch, let's go ahead and create a switch statement ourselves. So again, before we even start, I'm gonna go ahead and write CLS at the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my comment block for this code. I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, a name. And then I'm going to put the date, 18th of 2022. Uh, going to put the title. So in this case, we're going to talk about switch statement for a game. And then description. So this will be a switch that is the menu for a traditional game all right so now we got the uh, code block or the comment block out of the way uh, let's go ahead and create a switch now for my switch I'm going to make a game so like a switch is again are usually uh, like whenever you kind of think of it like usually it's kind of like a menu right so whenever you go to and you call like let's say the medical line right they'll say press one if you want to talk to your pcm press two if you want to talk to a nurse press three if you want to talk to the family doctor you know press four blah 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 so that's usually what a switch is for most of the time right so it's going to give you a list of options and then you select one of those right so for this one i want to create a game and we're going to use a switch where we're going to say press one if you want to play the game press two if you want to see the instructions for the game press three if you want to see the high scores press four for the high credits and then we'll have a default saying hey if you didn't press any of these try again you know something like that so but again we still need to interact with some sort of user or some sort of player right so we're still going to have to use a read host command so let's go ahead and read host, right? Let's ask the user to enter a number, right? So we're going to go ahead and ask the user to enter a number. So we're going to say number equals read host. You know, please enter a number one through four, right? And then we're going to save that as a number. But remember again, uh, if they enter a number, we need to make sure that they actually enter an integer and it actually saves as an integer. Now, let's go ahead and do control J. Let's do switch. And the number, right, that we're, that condition right here in here that we're going to be comparing is going to be number, right? And then, yeah, I don't really like how they do this. So I'm going to kind of go ahead and do it myself. So uh, all right. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. All right. So if number is equal to one is equal to two, is equal to three is equal to four now default means they didn't put one two three or four so let's say we're gonna ask them a number place their number between one and four and then we're gonna say okay we're gonna evaluate that number is it equal to one if it's equal to one let's say they're gonna go ahead and play game right so we can write play game now normally in this, you would actually have a function called play game or, you know, game start, right? Uh, but now we're just, you know, we haven't gotten that far yet. So we're just going to just write to the screen. Hey, we're playing the game, right? Uh, for two, let's say if they press two, uh, then we're going to allow them to see the instructions, right? So we'll go ahead and write instructions. And again, most of the time you'd have like an actual function, right? 
that's going to pull up the instructions to the game. Uh, for three, we're going to go ahead and show them the high scores. Show high scores. And then four, we're going to let them see uh, the credits. All right. Now, the default is if they don't do one through four, which we told them to do one through four, you know, we're going to say something like try again. Remember to use numbers one through one through four. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, I think that should, should be good. So let's go ahead and press this run. All right, please enter number one through four. All right, let's go ahead and hit one. Oh. What in the world is going on? All right, so it says please enter number. We hit one, right? And then what did it do? It did play game, instructions, show high score, and show credits. Let's run that again. Let's make sure. Let's do a three this time. Showing everything. So I have a feeling... Let's try that. Okay. So apparently, ah, uh, what it's doing in that case, you would actually have to put number equals. If you're going to do uh, the conditional statement in there, if it's just one through four, you don't want to have those curly brackets around it. All right. So let's go ahead and do it again. Let's do uh, four. Show credits. Great. Now, if we run it again and we do like, let's say eight, right? Then again, it does that default. Try again. Remember to use numbers one through four. All right, so we go ahead and try it again. This time we actually do two instructions. So again, that is the switch statement. Uh, now, if you actually want to do something more than just this, which most times switch statements, you really not meant to, but you can, right? You can actually throw in something like this, but in this case, you would do like, you know, number is less than one or something like that, right? So if you need to like do something like that, then you would um, do curly brackets. Otherwise, if it's just like a number, then you just want to have, have it like that. All right, so we are finally down to the exercises. So I want you to go ahead and do exercises one through four. Make sure that you're prepared to come in uh, tomorrow and be able to do uh, these, these questions on the board. And you're able to kind of step through all of them. And then that should be, uh, that should be it for the rest of today. So again, remember, if you need to come in tomorrow, if you have any questions like that, there's always SIA in the morning and we can help you out. Otherwise, have a good rest of the day.